Okay, well, today what we're going to focus on is creating a program that will follow a line. And so in order to get started, I'm just going to click on my plus sign up here, create a new program, click on it, and I'm going to title it, follow the line. And before I get started, just a couple of things. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have uh, be bring up a loop block because I want this to repeat several times. And then I am going to have a switch. And the switch is kind of an if-then. I'm going to be uh, getting some readings from a line, a uh, black line that's on a white poster board. And in order to demonstrate how to do that, I'm just going to use some still pictures that I've already taken. And they're on a presentation. So I'll be cutting out to that for that part of it. And then what we're going to have to do is change the, the loop a little bit and the switch in order to make it happen. The way it works is um, you determine how much light is reflected. So I'm using my uh, color sensor to determine how much light's reflected. And then I'm telling the robot that if it's greater than, the amount of light is greater than, turn one direction. And if it's less than, turn the other direction. And what that causes the robot to do is kind of to go back and forth off of the line and it'll follow it. So this is how we're going to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click down here and I want to grab a loop and I'm going to bring that right up here. And then I'm going to put a switch inside of my loop. Now at this point, I need to know um, what my measurements are to figure out um, this information in here. So this is where I'm going to cut to my uh, images that I already have. So here's one of the images I'm going to use. You can see this is kind of a, a graphic of what your uh, EV3 uh, screen can look like. Uh, you've got your play, this is where your files are, and then this third part is the brick apps. And right in here we have port view. And what this allows me to do is when I click on this, it shows me what um, different sensors I have in, attached to my robot. And in this example, I have the um, light the color sensor attached to port 3. And what I've done is I've held it over a black line and it showed me that 5% reflected. And then on this one, that's 69% reflected. So with that information, um, I'm going to use that to help me program. So I'm going to go back to uh, the EV3 software here to continue showing you how to do the programming. So I'm back at the program, and the first thing that I need to do is I need to change my switch from the touch sensor, and I want it to go to the color sensor, and I want to compare the reflected light intensity because I compared the black line to the white poster board. And uh, automatically, by default, it comes up here. It wants to be in port 3, which is perfect because that's where I have it attached. And this 4 is just my less than greater than. So this is less than and 50. And that's fine because my measurements were 5 and 69, so 50 this should work out just fine. And what I'm going to do then is if it's less than 50, it's going to do what's on top. And if it's greater than 50, then it will... Um, do the action on the bottom. So I'm going to drag up a couple of motors and my uh, motors are actually connected to B and to C. And so what I want to do is I'm going to turn B on rather than having rotations. I'm going to have it on and then on C I'm going to actually turn it off. On the bottom I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going to bring up two more motors this time I'm going to have it on, but it's going to be motor C this time. And then this one's going to be B, and it's going to be off. So the way that I have this program is if it's less than 50, then port B is going to be on. And what that's going to cause the robot to do is it's going to move um, B, but with C being off, then it's going to force the robot to be right. And then what's going to happen is it's going to go off of the uh, black line. It's going to judge the white. And once it hits that, it's going to be greater than 50. And so then it's going to occur, uh, come down here to the bottom and run this part of the program, which means that the C motor is going to run and the B is going to be off and it's going to force it back to the left. And it's going to kind of continue back and forth um, along the line. The other thing that I have here is on my loop, I've got it set for unlimited. And what this will do is allow me to run this robot along the line. It'll continue on and on and on forever. You can change it up a little bit. One of the things you can do is you can do it for time. So if there was ever a program 
or a competition where you had to program the robot to follow a line, stop, and then do another action, you could figure out how long it would take, and then you could type in the time. So I could do 4.5 seconds, and this program is going to run for 4.5 seconds. Once I'm done, then I just plug in my robot, download it, and give it a test. The one thing to remember is when you're setting up a line to be followed, make sure that there's enough um, difference in the amount of light that re is reflected between the board that it's on or the floor and the color of the line. I noticed on mine when I was playing uh, the red tape and the white board, there wasn't much discrepancy, so I had a hard time um, getting the robot to follow the red line, but it would follow the black and the blue rather easily. So just something to keep in mind and hope this helps you out.